All right, how's it going? This is Mr. Zari here at Landrum Middle School in Spring Branch ISD. Uh, today we're going to take a look at programming the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 robot using a gyro sensor. Uh, before we do that, make sure that you guys always use your brain and think things through. Okay, it makes just it makes life a whole lot easier. All right, so right now I've got an open blank project and an open blank program. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and save my project. So I'm going to save my project as uh, I'm going to put it on the desktop. And I'm going to call this the gyro sensor. Okay, uh, going to click save, and then I'm going to go ahead and rename my program gyro sensor because I'm only going to make one program here, and I might just have to do some edits as I'm making this program. <clears throat> so everything is taken care of. So this is what the gyro sensor is. It is a little box that looks like it has a recycling symbol on it. It's got a arrow going clockwise and an arrow going counterclockwise. And what it's able to do is it actually measures the angle at which the robot is turning. Okay, uh, this is a, actually a very common sensor. All of your cell phones have sensors like this in them. That's how it knows whether or not your screen should be in landscape mode or in portrait mode. Okay, so this is a very common sensor. We just don't normally think of these things as uh, things that are available on uh, objects that we use. Uh, this sensor happens to be a very finicky sensor. Uh, lots of times it will just kind of go wild and start changing its, uh, its value on its own. And typically the way to fix that is just simply unplug it and replug it and it should stop. All right. So this is what I want to do. I want to make a program where my robot moves forward. Uh, it doesn't really matter how fast, but I'm going to make it move forward for about four rotations. I'm going to make sure that my large motors are plugged into ports B and C, which they are. Okay. Then, once it's moved forward for four rotations, I want it to turn left 90 degrees. And the gyro sensor is going to measure when it's turned 90 degrees and make it stop. So, in order for us to do this, we have to first use one of the sensor blocks. And I'm going to go to the yellow tab and find the gyro sensor. And I'm going to make sure that it's plugged into port 2, which it is. And I'm going to click on this icon right here, and I'm going to go to reset. The reason why I have to do this is because it takes a reading as uh, in comparison to where the robot was located when you turned it on. So when you turn on your robot and it's sitting on the table, that is where it takes a reading at 0 degrees. Of course, you're going to move your robot around the table, so zero degrees is never going to be exactly where you want it to be unless we reset the gyro sensor to zero in the middle of our program before we want it to start taking a measurement. So that's the reason why I put this reset block in my program. Once I've done that, then I want my robot to start turning left. So I'm going to make it turn left, let's just say negative 47, and I want it to be on continuously until my gyro sensor reads 90 degree turn. So I'm going to go to flow control, and just like all the rest of the sensors, we're going to pull in the weight block, and I'm going to find gyro sensor. I have compare and I have change. We're just going to use compare. Change is able to give me um, usually data. So I'm going to have an angle here and I want it to turn 90 degrees. It says 90 degrees right now. So I hope that that's correct. Uh, we have the option of equal, not equal to, greater than, greater than, less than, less than, and less than equal to. So let's say I want it to be equal to or greater than. Let's just see what happens, okay? So greater than, equal to. Let's see if that's correct. So 90 degrees. I sense that there may be a problem, but we need to see how this behaves so we can figure out how to solve this problem. So once this happens, I want it to uh, stop. So let's go ahead and put in a stop. All right, so we've got that taken care of. So hopefully, robot goes forward four rotations, resets the gyro sensor, turns to the left continuously until it reads that it's turned 90 degrees, and then it stops. Let's go ahead and download it and see how this works. Okay, so we've got our robot programmed, uh, and we saved this project as Gyro Sensor. So I'm going to tab over to my Project tab, and I'm going to find Gyro Sensor. 
And inside gyro sensor, I'm going to look for the uh, program that's called gyro sensor. So I found it. Let's press play and see what happens. It's moving forward four rotations. Now it's turning left, but it's continuously turning left. I thought it was supposed to stop at 90 degrees, but it doesn't look like it wants to stop at all. So, there must be a problem. Let's figure it out. Okay, so we just tested uh, our robot and it just continuously turned counterclockwise and it never stopped. So, I have a feeling that the issue is with these parameters right here in my weight block. Okay? So, first of all, if it turns left, which is counterclockwise, will my reading be positive 90 degrees or will it be negative 90 degrees? And the answer to that is it will be negative 90 degrees. Okay? Now, if it's going to be negative 90 degrees, should it be greater than equal to? or should it be less than equal to because negative 90 less than negative 90 would be like negative 91 so once it passes negative 90 it's getting smaller and smaller because it's a negative number so we want to go less than equal to negative 90 which will be a left hand turn let's see if this functions the way that we expect it to Okay, so here we are with our second try, and we've made some adjustments as to the value of our degree turn and whether or not it's greater than or less than. So I'm going to tab over to Gyro Sensor Project. I'm going to go to the Gyro Sensor Program, and let's see if it worked correctly this time. Going forward four rotations, resets, stops at 90 degrees. That's exactly what we expected it to do. So I think we found the solution. Okay, so at this point we've got our robot to work successfully and that's typically the extent in which we're going to use the gyro sensor. That's enough information to get us started. However, I just need you to remember that you have to have some good number sense knowing what is a positive and negative number and whether or not we should use a greater than or less than type symbol when we make our program. So. Remember also that we always have to reset the gyro sensor before it starts to do whatever action we want it to do because the gyro sensor, whenever you turn on the robot, it zeroes itself out at that moment. But then you move the robot around and everything changes. So that's pretty much all I need to show you guys. Uh, you'll figure out the rest on your own, I hope. So. Make sure that you're always using your brain. Make sure you think things through and always make sure that you do the right thing. You guys take it easy.